Nasty sex life of Catherine the Great Catherine the Great ruled Russia for more than three decades. She had no biological right to the throne. She ruled autocratically and legitimized that way of ruling with cunning and ruthless strategies where she tended to outwit her enemies, often using sex as a weapon. She was a great leader and visionary, but rumors about her misogynistic behavior tarnished that reputation. And there were even speculations that she died while having sex with a horse and was given the epithet of a nymphomaniac. Catherine was an extremely independent woman, and in that spirit, she enjoyed a very liberal sex life. Allegedly, she was responsible for the death of her husband Peter I.I. What was the sex life of Catherine the Great? See the following video and subscribe to History Facts I.I. to watch more exciting stories from the intimate life of many great rulers who mark human history in the future. Enjoy the video. In her time, Catherine the Great was one of the strongest political players who managed to inviably expand the borders of Russia. Precisely because she was very powerful, she became the victim of numerous myths that emphasized her misogynistic behavior and that she was prone to nymphomania, bestiality, and voyeurism. Those stories were no myths and many historians affirmatively spoke about the fact that she behaved in the mentioned way and that she was prone to deviant behavior, which was not so unusual for rulers with great power at that time. According to historians, she had as many as 12 lovers, and one of them helped her to later get rid of her husband, Peter III. It is even speculated somewhere that that number went to over 20 intimate partners. None of those intimate relationships lasted more than two years. Catherine knew that marriage was not a good idea if she wanted to keep the desired power, and it is widely known that her marriage with Peter III was a real disaster. So it is not surprising that she had so many lovers with whom she had excellent business relations and often exploited them for its goals. Catherine the Great was born in Prussia in the city of Stettin, which is today's Szczecin in Poland. She came from a princely Germanic family, but despite her blue blood, she was relatively unknown until she married Peter I when she was only 16 years old. He behaved very immaturely and regularly got drunk, which Catherine did not like at all. It is an arranged marriage in which there was not much love, and Catherine was very unhappy in that relationship. She didn't want to make love with her husband because he was unattractive, first of all, due to the disfigurement of his face that occurred as a result of having contracted smallpox. Because of this, Peter was indifferent to her and often humiliated her in public. Peter I.E. was allegedly even impotent, and with him, she could neither have children nor get the desired sexual pleasure that she achieved with her lovers. To get rid of her husband, her lover Grigory Orlov helped her, so in a military coup, Peter I.E. was overthrown from the throne, and she became the empress. Peter died under suspicious circumstances. It was presented to the public that he died as a result of complications from hemorrhoids, but most believed that he was killed by the aforementioned Orlov's brother. Extramarital affairs were an integral part of her life. She had three children, and it was not believed that Peter was the father of any of them because he was impotent. She had a son with Orlov, and she also had children with Russian officers Sergei Saltikov and Stanislas Poniatowski. On the day he helped her get rid of her husband, Orlov introduced Catherine to the man who would later become her new lover, and Catherine was no longer interested in Orlov. It was about General Grigory Potemkin who was present on the day when the military coup broke out to overthrow Peter I.A. from the throne. Potemkin was 10 years younger than Catherine. Many believed that Potemkin loved Catherine very much, but that and all of Catherine's other loves have been questioned because it was believed that her partners wanted to use her to gain power. She certainly raised the social status of her lovers, and she threatened them that they would not have a good time if they betrayed her. Precisely because she did not trust the people around her, she often changed lovers pulling political strings through sex, but also to guarantee that no man became too powerful. Although she had never been with any lover for more than two years, she was extremely generous with them. After breaking up with one of her lovers, she would send them parting gifts. Those gifts were not modest at all, so the lovers received titles, land, and palaces, and one of them received even 1,000 people who became his servants. Poniatowski fared best of all the lovers because to keep Poland as a vassal, Catherine gave him the title of King of Poland. According to the stories of most historians, her greatest love of all lovers was Putemkin. That relationship is also immortalized in the HBO series, in which a lot is learned about Catherine's life. He was a minor nobleman whose relationship with Catherine allowed him to become the most powerful man in Russia. Unlike her husband, Potemkin was a true hero, ambitious and intellectually much closer to Catherine, so it is not surprising that she loved him so much. 
With him, she colonized southern Russia, annexed Crimea, and founded the Black Sea Fleet, which became one of the most powerful naval forces in Europe. According to one of Catherine's biographies, she and Potemkin had a very spicy sex life as Potemkin owned sex toys that he used to further satisfy his sweetheart. While he is away, she uses porcelain weapons to enhance her sex life when he is not around. Even when he was no longer in a relationship with her, he remained her favorite young man as he was given the title of Prince of the Holy Roman Empire. When he died as a result of the fever, Catherine was distraught. After him, Catherine never found an equal lover. She mostly chose handsome young men and politically insignificant men as lovers. Stories about Catherine the Great's sexual tendencies are numerous. She allegedly owned erotic furniture and her lovers, before entering into a relationship with her, passed a test with her maid, who would sleep with them first. According to urban legend, the erotic cabinet was next to her apartment in Gatchina. The furniture was very eccentric and full of perversion because the tables had legs in the shape of the male genital region. The walls were covered with artwork that also featured sexual motifs. Statues of naked men and women have also been seen, and according to some stories, certain artifacts were brought from Pompeii for Catherine to add to her collection. German officers allegedly had the opportunity to see that cabinet during the invasion of the Soviet Union, but even if it is exactly that room and the mentioned furniture has disappeared to this day. It may happen that this is another fabricated story to spoil her reputation and what she has done for Russia. A lot of stories were created only a few years after her death, because it was known how powerful she was and that the creators of those stories almost certainly would not have had a good time. From today's perspective, the fact that she had a large number of emotional partners with whom she did not have excessively long relationships is debatable and would not meet with approval as it was not supported even when Catherine ruled Russia. Precisely because she had a turbulent intimate life, she was the victim of numerous fabrications, some of which were encouraged even by her son Paul, who wanted to take over the throne for her. Throughout human history, there have not been very many powerful women, but those who had the opportunity to rule and had a high reputation were victims of many lies so that their reputation would be threatened and they would be overthrown from the throne. One of the biggest oddities associated with her life, at the end of her life, is that she died during sexual intercourse with a horse. Almost certainly that story was invented for all the reasons mentioned, which like some other stories was created by her enemies who wanted her throne. She had a large number of lovers, but she did not have the perverted sexual habits that were attributed to some other powerful women in human history, such as Cleopatra, Marie Antoinette, or Elizabeth I. In addition to the story that she died during intercourse with a horse, there were rumors that she died while on the toilet. A more realistic story is that she suffered a stroke at the age of 67 and died the day after. Whatever her private life was, she was a very modern woman and a formidable ruler for her time, which made many people uncomfortable. Russia as we know it today would never have been the way it was without her. This was an interesting story about the life of one of the most powerful Russian rulers, which leaves no one indifferent. All of the aforementioned sexual habits spoke volumes for her power regardless of whether they were true or false. Powerful rulers always had strange sexual behavior that was sometimes exaggerated to suppress their power. For more interesting stories about the sex life of famous rulers, like, share this video, and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.